My grandfather is an interesting man, one that I love very much. I'd say that everybody who ever knew him either loved him or hated him. There was no in-between with Wild Bill. Wild Bill Elliott, not the cowboy and not the race car driver, but a man who has lived an incredible life nonetheless. This is his story. William Hamilton Elliott, born March 21, 1931, as the middle child of three to Paul and Jennifer Elliott. He had two sisters, Tricia and Jacqueline, but he was the only boy in this loving home. Sadly, love does not always last. Me? Yes. Why is it always my fault? What? I work. I come home every day to provide for this family. You haven't loved me in years, have you? So divorces are never easy. What led us here today doesn't matter. What matters is what happens going before. So divorces are not granted by the court. It's effective 30 days from today. Bill's father went on to wed a woman named Martha, who already had three boys and a girl from her own previous marriage. Bill's sisters went to live with their birth mother, while Bill stayed with his father and new stepfamily. Elder of the state of Tennessee, you are now pronounced husband and wife. No, Joey, you can't go to the movies with us. You're too young, you can't. Maybe next time. It's too far to walk, you always get tired, and I end up having to carry you. I'm getting older, can I please go? <sighs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> Bill, can you carry me? Alright. Bill tried his best to watch over his step-siblings. All right, children, the Boy Scouts are looking for someone to play the bugle or the trumpet. Do any of you know how to play the bugle or the trumpet? Me, I do. Jason, so you have a trumpet at home? Yes, me. And do you actually know how to play it? Yes, me. All right, we'll bring it with you to the next meeting and you're their guy, okay? Okay. All right, it's time to go. Have a good day. Bye. 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 You liar. You don't own an instrument and you surely can't play one. Well, you'll steal one for me, right, Bill? <sighs> You're an idiot. Come on. I knew you wouldn't have let me down, Bill. You're still an idiot. Don't make me do that ever again. Got it? Okay, Bill. It's still pretty swell, though. Yeah, yeah. Don't mention it to anyone. Even if Bill wasn't the oldest in the family, he wound up taking care of the others. From bullies to gigging frogs, Bill was always there to help. But his father wouldn't always be. You listen to your mother, okay? Hi. <clears throat> you be a good boy, all right? Bye, Dad. Thanks soon. Bye. Work called Paul away constantly. Even though they loved each other and relished the little time they got to spend together, there was never enough of it. And every summer... Yeah. What are you doing out here by yourself? I was just going to go visit my grandparents' farm in Virginia. That's a long way from here. You hitching a ride all the way to Virginia? Mm -hmm. You do this a lot? Yeah, I do it every summer. Never had any trouble, huh? Well, this is your lucky day. I'm going your way. But hitchhiking's kind of dangerous these days. Just remember that. I can't really drive myself, so... Well, you know, you got a point there. How old are you? Mm, Eleven. Eleven, huh? Well, you're a pretty big boy for your age, so I guess you do all right. <clears throat> well, young man, let's put your suitcase up here. What's your name? Bill. Great name. 
My name's Bill too. Glad to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Climb on up and let's head this rig to Virginia. Have you noticed the difference in the egg? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? It's all yellowy. Much yellow because that's a fresh hen egg. Come on, girl. Come on. Bill's charm grew to match his strong back. He began to catch more than his fair share of attention from the fairer sex. <laughs> How's yours? It's like two slices of meat were placed between bread. <clears throat> A lot of mustard. Do you not like it? No, oh my I gosh, like you don't like it. No, I swear you don't like it. No, I like mustard. It's the thing. I love mustard. You I'm a mustard guy and then I uh, I hitchhiked to my grandparents farm and I uh, spent the summer with them oh really yeah. I'm sure that was exciting oh it was fun <laughs> I can't say I've ever hitchhiked really no <laughs> you should try I will consider that thank you <laughs> yeah. go to a lot of different places and meet a lot of different people absolutely okay so tell me about all the sports you do well, I like football, baseball, and I like basketball, but I'm not the best at that one. Yeah, the battle. Oh, 
too banana y or it's just like milk. <laughs> it's just. 16 for 70. 70. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Yeah. 50 great. Great. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, How about uh, popcorn two drinks? Sounds good. Yeah. So, have you seen this movie? Not yet, I'm excited. Me too. I really like Errol Flynn. I remember uh, watching Parker, Cat and Blood, mm -hmm. Sailing the Seas, Fighting People, Landing on Beaches, Finding Treasure. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go with the Sailing the Seas. Yeah. 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 Silent things. Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin. He, he fall off something or they they drop a barn on him. Oh. You know, Charlie Chaplin's doing talkies now, which is strange. I didn't know the man could speak. Oh really? Yeah. I wonder if that mustache is real. Start this thing. Hopefully soon. Yeah. So, uh, what's your family like? Pretty nice, kind of quiet. Uh, your mom, your dad, what do they do? Um, my mom works at a bank, and my dad is a police officer. Neat. Popcorn. Sure. Girls definitely took notice of Wild Bill, which was a good thing, because without them, English was probably the only course he would have passed. Hey, what you doing, Bill? Eating ice cream. <laughs> oh, here's that chapter seven homework. Oh, and I just finished that history report on George Washington, yeah. so, yeah, no problem. Hey, honey, thanks. honey, what, what's going on here? Mom, oh, fiddlesticks. It's not like this one, you've been such a no. eager beaver doing your homework. Oh, you are stealing from my daughter. But money wasn't ever as plentiful, even after the Depression, as his dates were. So, he had to get creative with ways to make money. Got some empties here for you. Thank you very much. How responsible of you to recycle like this, young man? Well... And there you go. Thank you very much. No, no. Thank you. Hello there, ma'am. How about I shine those shoes for you? When I'm through with them, they'll sparkle. Oh, well, I don't think I need a shoe shine today, but thank you very much, young man. Everybody needs a shoe shine every once in a while. How about a discount? Let's say uh, a dime. A dime? Well, I suppose it couldn't hurt anything. Well, sit on down. Take a load off your feet. Now, that I can't do right now. I have an appointment at the beauty parlor, but I will be sure to come back directly afterward. But the beauty parlor is just down the street, conveniently located. How about you leave those shoes with me? I'll get them finished while you're getting all gussied up. That seems kind of odd, but I suppose I will leave you my shoes to shine and I will come back directly after my appointment to collect them from you right here at this bench. You got it, miss. Thank you. Ruined? 
They look better than they did before. I used two whole coats of polish on these things. But they were white shoes! Now they're, they're just a black smear! Well, you never specified what color of polish you want me to use, and black is all I have. You ruined my shoes! I gave you a discount on them. A discount? You expect me to pay you for that? You owe me another pair of shoes! I do expect payment. I provided a service. I used extra product. Shoe shine ain't free, lady. You have a good day now. Hello, can I help you? Yes, ma'am. Now you look like a lady that knows quality when she sees it. And I bet you could use one of the biggest, finest Christmas trees to liven up your living. Well, I'll just picture your family's faces when this thing's all lit up with presents all around. Well, you know, it is actually a really nice tree. Did you haul this thing here all by yourself? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, hard work brings its own rewards. Well, good for you. You know, my husband was supposed to go out and cut us down a tree himself, but... He couldn't forget. Now, could he, miss? Good point. Okay, how much? Whatever you think is fair, ma'am. Uh, maybe a couple bucks? You know what? Got a deal. Thank you very much. I'll just uh, leave this here for you and your husband to put up together. All right, thanks. You have a good day. You as well. You as well. So where exactly did Bill find this fantastic tree? In the woman's own backyard. Where else? Bill dreamed up many questionable business schemes, but his work ethic was very strong. He worked hard, but he played hard too. And would you believe it, Bill even played a warm-up game against THE Harlem Globetrotters. Naturally, the Globetrotters destroyed his team, but they all had fun. One day that would forever change Big Bill's life is when he first met Barbara. His older sister is who he had to thank for that. She introduced them. Barbara was a quiet, beautiful girl who went to nursing school with Tricia. While Bill's life wasn't always a bed of roses, Barbara had many struggles of her own, although they were completely different. While Barbara was already used to the duties of being a housewife and caretaker as a young girl, her mother kept her on a tight leash. Bill introduced Barbara to a whole new world, one that included teaching her how to play cards and swim, both which were forbidden by her controlling mother. If I'd played the ace first, you wouldn't have trumped it? Well, if a rabbit had wings, it wouldn't bump its butt. Oh, Bill. Though she never was any good, Barbara loved playing bridge more than anyone. <laughs> oh, I got that one with the ace of hearts. Yeah, well, even a blind <laughs> pig will stumble on an acorn. The pair fell in love and were secretly wed. Your chariot away. Why the secrecy? 
because Barbara lived in a singles dorm for the nursing school at UT. If a nursing student got married, they'd have to move out, and the couple could not manage that financially just yet. They didn't even have a car of their own when they got married. But soon enough, they wound up with a car, even if it was missing second and reverse. Thank you, Rob. Oh, no problem. We were doing this. It's crazy. <laughs> My mom is going to kill us. Ah, oh, don't you worry about that. I'll take care of her. <laughs> and thank you, Rob. We really appreciate the ride. Oh, don't mention it. I know you do the same for me. Plus, we've got to marry you two quick before Barbara comes to her senses. <laughs> The two were soon blessed by their first child, but there were complications. Barbara was not doing well as she battled toxemia. No. He's gonna be okay. Their firstborn, according to doctors, would be stillborn or so mentally and physically handicapped that he likely couldn't survive. We're gonna have this baby. Yeah. It's gonna work out. He's gonna be okay. Be okay. 1950s, abortions were unheard of except in the direst of circumstances. The couple went against doctors' recommendations and tried to have the baby. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Elliot. Here's your new healthy baby boy. Oh, you're so healthy. Their boy would grow up to be healthy, intelligent, and strong. They named him Billy. Within a few years, the couple had another boy and a girl. Bill was a proud papa who tried to teach his children right from wrong. Billy, Red Paul and Linda, come on to the couch. I have a few things to talk about. Alright, got a few things to say. Kids, God is real. You know this. Don't let any fool convince you otherwise. You got that, Linda? You know what you believe. And also, don't use God as a crutch. You guys know right from wrong. And if anyone ever comes out for you for what you believe in, yeah, you need to stand your ground. You know that lying, cheating, and stealing are wrong. If you get in a fight, Oh, I'm going to bust your tail. You better believe it. You got that, Billy? Yes, sir. But if you run away from a fight, I'm definitely going to bust your tail. You got that, Paul? All right. Like I said, you know what's right and wrong? You stand up for what you believe in. Go ahead and go play. Okay. Bill's words would echo throughout his children's lives many times, far more often than he had to swat their backsides. Even though Bill had become a family man, he was still a tough guy. Bill! Hey. That was great! Oh, thanks. Alright, so me and my brother, we're going pro. You should come on the road with us. Ah, oh, man, I can't. Ah, uh, man, I'm a pipe fitter. I got an apprenticeship going on. I get to come home every night. I can't go hang around with you knuckleheads. Man, but just imagine, though. Wild! Bill Elliott. Imagine how many tickets we could sell. <laughs> uh, like I said, man, you guys are gonna have to sell tickets for me. <laughs> oh, come on! Get out of here! Even though Bill and Barbara only had three kids of their own, they took in quite a lot of extended house guests over the years. Twelve or more, actually. Hey! You're trash, Bill Elliot! I can't believe you snuck off and married my daughter! You're an uneducated idiot! Not all of those individuals were especially easy to live with, such as Bill's mother-in-law. A few personal belongings may have been taken by one or two guests, yet this couple still sheltered those in need. Even one obnoxious, mouthy Alabama fan. Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, old man? You gonna do it? Whoa, 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 Following in the footsteps of Bill's uncle Haynes, who was a tail gunner in World War II, Barbara's little brother Charles, as well as Bill's littlest stepbrother, now affectionately known as Boo, proudly served their country in the Air Force. Take care of them. While their wives Erlene and Betty and their children remained with the Elliots.
people felt safe around Big Bill, unless they crossed him. Which happened when one of his baseball league opponents pushed Bill's teammates around. Bill made an aggressive tag at home plate against that player, which erupted into a bench-clearing brawl with one man fighting another team. While Bill wasn't always the biggest dog of the fight, there were very few dogs who had the same amount of fight in them that he did. What's going on, guys? Why are you seeing a lot of officers around here? Uh, just trying to keep everybody on their best behavior. Was there a problem at the game last night? Yeah, there was a riot last night. And there he is. Officer. Bill. He quickly built a reputation as the guy not to mess with on construction jobs, too. You bunch of stupid hicks. You better do what you're told and do it right the first time. We're not dogs. These guys work hard and they do their best. Show some respect. Elliot, I wasn't talking to you. You're as bad as the rest of this bunch. No, Bill, 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 you're gonna get us fired, man. You're Bill, Bill, you're gonna get us fired. You're gonna get us fired, Bill. Where do you think you're going? Figure I'd go turn in my brass. You're canning us, right? Lunch is over. Get back to work. Oh, and Elliot? Yeah? Nice shot. But there were other challenges that couldn't be beaten by brute force and determination alone. Bill's father, Paul, was gone too soon. If it was hard work or too much stress is anyone's guess. Concerns about his heart were brushed off by the family doctor, even though Nurse Barbara spotted stroke and heart attack symptoms early on. We're here tonight to show our love and support to the family of Paul Elliott, a man who died way too young. Paul was a good man. He was a hard-working man, family man. His wife and son and daughter-in-law and grandson are with us today. We're here to show the love and support for them and for Paul. The appreciation of his life. He worked at the plant and helped open up the plant that ended World War II. He was a pipe fitter. Worked in other places around this area and traveled to do that, always supporting his family. But we have comfort from the scriptures. And that comfort comes in a lot of places. One of the key places at a time like this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are comforting words to us, and they assure us that victory is possible for those of us who walk with Jesus and know Jesus. Victory is a possibility thanks to his life, his death, and his resurrection. Catch. Family always mattered to Bill. He loved his family and he loved his sports, so combining the two things seemed only natural to him. They were at one ball field or another almost every day of the week, every week. Coaching also played a huge part in his life. One thing that stood out about the way that he recruited and groomed talent was that family name, popularity, or wealth didn't matter. Bill often chose the outcasts, the troublemakers, the kids that needed him the most. Go. Okay. How you going? I'm slipping a little. 
Alright, just stay focused like we talked, alright? Okay. Yes, sir. Alright, show me on the court. Let's go. Thanks, bro. Let's go, Dewey. Go. He may have threatened to kill them, but he kept them in line and brought out the best in them as often as he could. His teams were consistently winning and usually finished in first or second place each season. Tragically, there were some battles that he just couldn't win. His older sister struggled with addiction throughout her life. This all began with her easy access to medication as a nurse. Uh, I just... I can't stop, Bill. I I've tried everything. Trish, you've got a kid. You've already lost your husband to popping pills. I'm not going to stand around here and let you dope yourself to death. You're going to make him an orphan. Walker's coming with us until you sober up. I'm on, so Walker. sorry. Thank you. Oh, Walker, buddy. you be good for your Uncle Bill. Bye. Mommy loves you. But just because he couldn't win every battle didn't stop him from fighting them. Tom? Hey. So, Bill, you know Morgan County, right? Yeah, I know where it's at. Well, we're going to send Fred there. And it's different. Different how? Well, it's very country, out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe not so safe for other people. Are you telling me it's not safe for Fred to work there because he's black? In a nutshell, yeah. Hmm. So he's got a better tan than us. Should that keep him from feeding his family? Now, now, Bill, you and I may think that, but other people won't feel the same. Oh, they will. Well, they'll shut their blinking, blinking mouths. He didn't say blinking, blinking. Bill, I just need you to go up there. Okay. All right. Help out. Do what you always do. All right? All right. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Bill, it's all right. I, I'll just file a grievance. I don't really want to get into anything out here in this part of town. So we're talking what? How many hours? It's just a few hours uh, that they shorted me. I, I, I'm not too concerned about it. When you say a few hours, are you talking about the whole eight hours? Yeah, but but it's okay. I, I'm not worried about it. Let's just keep things going. Uh, no problem. Fred, look, you pay bills, you got a family. I do, Bill, but I want to also make it home to that family. You wait right here. You wait right back. Wait a minute, Bill. What, what are you? What are you going to do? You wait right here. Fred Smith, you shorted him eight hours. You need to write him a check. No, I did. Yeah, you did, and you need to pay him. Look, I'll handle it. It's none of your business anyways, Bill. Write the check. You're not going to tell me what to do. This is my office, so how about you get out? <laughs> ah! <sighs> Write the check. What, what, what's going on in there? Thank you, Bill. <sighs> Next time you pull a pistol on me, your hand's not gonna be the only thing I break. What in the world happened in there? Help them balance the books. Appreciate that. Thank you. Bill and Fred finished their four-week job instead of getting fired or arrested, as one might think. But their business agent certainly had his hands full straightening that one out.
Bill stood up for Fred because he felt Fred was in the right. It was the same when it came to his kids. Hey, Miss Smith. Hello. I'm Bill, Billy's dad. Nice to meet you. My son here was working hard on this project and it looks like he got a couple marked wrong that were actually correct. Well, you know, I don't give perfect scores because no one is perfect. Hmm. But Billy worked really hard on that and I just want to make sure he gets credit where his credit's due. Can you take a look again? I suppose. Well, I guess you're right. All right, well, I appreciate it. Here you go, son. Well, I'm always available for questions if you need anything. Thank you. Bill may not have been the most perfect or affectionate father, but he tried to help out his kids in the best way that he knew how. Some boy did that? Let me get my jacket. Head over to the car. I'll meet Joe there. See you out front door. Can I help you? Hey, is Mark your son? He is my son. Hey, well, Mark's been picking on my boy at the bus stop, and uh, we'd like it to stop. Well, he's a pretty big boy himself right there. And your son's about three years older, so we'd like it to stop or else I'll have to come back, and it's going to be between you and me. I'll take care of it. All right. Take care. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Come on, boy. Bill's kids kept doing that thing that most every parent dreads, growing up. Billy married a woman named Debbie, and Paul proposed to a woman named Kathy. Wild Bill was even protective of his soon-to-be daughter-in-law, Kathy. Hi, yes, can I speak to a manager? Yes, ma'am. One second. Thank you. Hi, this is Ted. Hi, yes, this is Kathy Huebner. Um, uh, I was Kathy. calling about my last check. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't get it yet. That's because you didn't come down. You didn't show up for work. Yes, I understand. Um, it... But you didn't show up. No, I, 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 I I'm left. I'm trying to let you know. Yes, I understand, but I still worked right before. Understandable, but you did not. What do you mean? But I know I, I need my check. You're not getting your check if you don't come to work. But they said they were not going to give me my check because I left. What? They, they can't do that. They don't own you. They said I should have thought about that before I left. Give me that I, phone. Hello. Yes, sir. Who is this? Is this the manager? Yes, sir, this is. This is Kathy's father. Let me tell you something, pal. My daughter and her boyfriend are coming down there in a few minutes to get that check, and it better be ready. Yes, sir. Or I'm coming down there. I'm you got sorry. me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what I thought. Bill. It'll be ready. What? It'll be ready. As you may have guessed, the check was ready when they arrived. Paul and Kathy got married, and before long, an abundance of grandkids were on the way from Bill's sons and their wives. Now that he was a grandfather, the big bull of the woods had been transformed into a sweet, cuddly teddy bear of a man, right? Oh, run, 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 run! Run, run, run! run. <laughs> Maybe more grizzly than teddy bear. But Bill still liked nothing more than having fun with his family. And then if I don't have that, I don't have a spade. Uh, if you don't have a club, she already took it with a spade, you can do that. It's called throw off. You have too many cards. Too many? Hey, look in here and see if there's a card. I thought I could handle it. And there were also fun family activities like mounting a TV antenna. Paul, put your hand on that thing. Let's get it. Let's try it. Uh, slow down now. Wait a minute. I got the heavier hand. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> what in the world happened? Quit laughing and hold on I'm to the dying. dang antenna. What are you doing? Your pants. What? I know my pants. Wait a minute. Hold the thing. Now we got it. It's good. There we go. How are you? Oh, God. That is stopping, Lord Goblin. It quit laughing. I swear, Paul, you tell anybody about this, I'll kill you dead or dead. Sorry, Dad. Yeah, I know, I can tell. Now we got her. Now we got her. We're all right. We're fine now. All right. Quit laughing! 
Let it be! I swear I'm gonna kill you! And don't you never tell nobody about this! Bill loved taking his family on trips, and he paid to make sure everyone could be there. From cabins in the Smokies, to RV camping, Opryland, Dollywood, or even Disney World. It was all about making family memories. And at Christmas time... What is that? Well, it's for springtime. It's for springtime. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll be what I get for. <laughs> Super Nintendo. Yes. We can okay. play. We're going to play lots of video games. Oh. Uh, right. She's like, I'm taking that to me. It's a Bill always wanted his grandkids to have great, big, memorable Christmases. So even if it wasn't really in the budget, just like those vacations, he thought about the joy that they would bring more than the consequences. Bill and Barbara's kids had grown up and now had kids of their own, who were also growing up. So with his grandkids in high school and even college by now, Surely Bill was mellowing out in his advancing years, right? Hello, Mr. Elliot. We at Car Insurance Heroes extend our deepest sympathy during this difficult time following your accident. We would like to make this process easier by helping to pay for the cost of your medical bills. If you'll just sign these documents, I can get your check ready right now. What is this? It's a settlement regarding Mr. Elliot's car accident, but I can only discuss that with the client himself. Well, I'm his father. He's on medication and he's barely conscious. Well, just as long as he can sign his name and I'll, uh, I'll be right out of your way, gentlemen. Oh yeah, you're going to be right out of the way. You're leaving, either through the window or out that door, salesman. Up to you. Uh, well, well uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, very, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean any aggravation. I mean, I was just trying to help Mr. Elliot with a, a... Okay, okay, okay. While Big Bill certainly didn't fit the feeble little old man stereotype, still, even the strongest man eventually slows down and begins to lose his strength and health. Hey, Mom. Paul, your dad has had a heart attack. I am sure of it. Is he okay? Right now he's okay. He's sitting in his chair watching a ball game. But he needs to go to the hospital. Should I come over now? Yes. Okay. I love you, son. I love you, too. Hey, Mom. Glad you came. Is everything okay? No, he's still the same. Won't cut, won't badge. Mom says you're not feeling good. Let's... Let's go to the hospital and check. Fine. Mother's been nagging me all day about this. I don't need to go to the hospital. I know, Dad, but when your shoulder hurts like that and your, your chest, we need to go check it out and just make sure. I tell you, I'm fine. Look, she told your dad this years ago and he wouldn't listen. Let's just go. Go and let him check, make sure everything's okay. Oh, fine. Let's just go and get it over with. Okay, good. You need help? I'm fine, I tell you. I've got it. It's all right. All right, let's just go. go. Grab your jacket, Mom. We'll head out. Back, back, back. I know. Better make sure we're okay. I'm glad you're going. Bill had, in fact, had a heart attack. Thankfully, his wife Barbara spotted these symptoms just as she had for Bill's own father 30 years earlier. Fortunately, there was no damage to the heart muscle. However, Bill had to have triple bypass surgery. A non-invasive ultrasound was scheduled to check the artery in his leg, 
but the hospital made a mistake and performed a different procedure instead. This may have caused a blood clot to form in Bill's leg, which turned his foot black. They cut me nearly in half. Yeah, I can take that with 15 stitches down the front of me. You could. Okay. Doctors tried to save his leg, using medication to fight the infection. Even painkillers had rather extreme effects on Big Bill, though. I know it's not real, but I see the Civil War playing out in front of me. No, it isn't real. It isn't real. I know, but it's right there on the wall. I see it. Who left the elephants in the hospital? Elephants? Right there! They're right there! Right there! Oh, there's a great big one. Uh, it's got a baby with it. They're right there. See him? There it is. That's that's a sign. They're they're parking cars outside the window. What what are you talking about, Pop? Oh, here, 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 here. Now call this number. Oh, it's a what? special number. What? The White House needs to know they're gonna bomb the trade towers. Okay. All right. I'll... Hurry. Hey, Dr. Parker. Yes, I need a favor. Dad's. We live in the World Trade Center, and he's, mm. he's made me promise to call this number, and I need you to help me out on this. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I'm going to need you to... Okay, we dialed it. Nothing. Uh, do you mind going there and tell him that, that we've done this, so it'll, it'll make him rest easier? Of course, of course I will. Okay. Thank you. Eventually, Bill's left leg did have to be taken, but doctors were able to save his knee, providing easier rehab and mobility. How you doing, Big Bill? Well, I'm hurting. It's like I can still feel that dang foot, and it itches. Most of the time, it feels like it's going through the dang bed. That's what we call phantom pain, and it's common for amputees to have that. Well, I'm not a fan. I don't blame you one bit. I am so sorry to cut things short, but I have got to run back to work. I need for you, Barbara, to make sure that you are constantly moving his uh, knee joint around. I will, and Debbie, you have a good shift, and I'll stay here and take care of this rascal. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Something changed in Wild Bill after his heart attack and the loss of his leg. Throughout his life, he had experienced great loss and pain, but perhaps none was greater than the day he lost his Barbara. From their kids, Billy, Linda, and Paul, to Kathy, Janice, and the rest, things would never be the same. The sweetest woman on the earth has just left it. She's where she wants to be now. She won't have to worry. No more heart. <laughs> well, at least we have a hope of being with her again. The only thing she ever wanted was to be with her family. Barbara had been a faithful Christian for decades. When Bill, Paul, and Linda found the gospel, they obeyed it, and their mother wasn't far behind. She was so loyal a wife that she wanted to wait for Bill, but she knew she couldn't risk her soul. Bill had been less than receptive of the Bible's teachings. He often silenced family members who wanted to talk salvation. Huh. Hey, Barb, did... However, something changed. Even the things that gave him joy seemed to do very little now to keep a dark cloud from hanging over Bill. For someone who was always larger than life, the life of the party, he had become rather solemn and quiet. What's going on with you guys? It's nice. Uh, it was, it was a blur. Yeah. Oh, Florida's yeah. Florida yeah. great, yeah. but it's really uh, nice yeah. to be home. You lots of friends then? Yeah. So when are we getting some kids out of you too? Um, I don't know. I think we're on the 
the five-year plan. Five-year plan. What's yeah. that? You want yeah. five what, years? Yeah, kids? I think that's the plan. It, it could happen sooner, but right. Well, wow, they can't wait five years for kids, can they? Well, how many are y'all uh, gonna want to have? I don't know. At least two. At least I two. think that's yeah. that's what we've that's talked about. Yeah. Well, you need to have them. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Cudjoe's Cave in Kentucky. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. I want to go back up there sometime. It's, it's, uh, they don't call it that anymore. No, I don't think they do. I don't even know. Because it's part of the national, the national park now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I'm, I was scared to death when we went. What scared you? Well, first, when they walked us in there and they said, okay, now everybody turn the flashlights off. I'd never seen just black, black before, you know. That scared me. And then they said, if you didn't rub, you know, that rock thing that they said, was cut Joe's head. Yeah. If you didn't rub it, you couldn't get out alive. <laughs> and then Dad wouldn't rub it. Hey, Pop, what do you want to go to eat tonight? I don't care. Well, we got to figure out somewhere to go. Yeah. Well, then figure it out. Okay. You want steak or you want? We could always seafood. make your favorite. Say what? We could always make your favorite. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good, but uh, I'm not hungry anyway. Y'all just figure out what you want to eat. That'll be fine. You like to hear that too. I've always enjoyed this. It's a lot better than having to work all the time. I really love eating here. When Pop first brought me here, I got to be one of my favorite places. Oh. Nothing seems the same anymore. Nothing. It's changed. I'm sorry, thank you. We all sir. Aren't you going to eat, Big Bear? But there were still bright spots here and there, such as Bill getting to meet his first great-grandchild, courtesy of his eldest grandson, Travis, and his wife, Tahira. Hey, Big Bill. Hi. Oh, look at that girl. Hi. Hey. Meet Arabelle. Hey, Arabelle. Hey. 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 Look what you did. Oh, so pretty. She's a doll. Dialysis was a big part of Bill's life now. Sadly, he had an allergy that kept him from using the most effective cleaning agent, which made treatment times longer and less effective. He was doing rather well until the medical staff neglected to give Bill his heart medication on the way to dialysis. Rehabilitation continued in a nursing home. The setbacks also continued. Just here for bottles. I need you to stand up and put your leg on so I can weigh you. Wait a minute, the others just weigh me in the bed and then add the leg on afterwards. I'm not the others and I need you to stand up. Thank you. 
Hey, Pop. How you doing? Son, I think it's time for me to go on and be with Barbara. Dad, you're not ready for that. What do you mean I'm not ready? I had a heart attack. I, I lost my leg. I'm on dialysis. What are you talking about? I'm not ready. Dad, if you go now, you won't see Mom again. Um, Nurse Cordial was just here. Makes this place feel like a prison. She's the warden? Yeah, I guess I'm death row inmate. She pretty bad? Ah, uh, I don't know. She's not the nicest. I, I just don't like her. She's, she's bad, but I, I put up with worse. Yeah. Can you wait? I gotta do something. I'll be right back. All right, son. Okay. Hey. Everything all right, son? Yeah, everything's fine. I just talked to him about having that nursery assigned. Oh, son, you, you didn't have to do that. I know I didn't have to. I wanted to. I feel like nothing but a nuisance. I can't take care of anything. I can't fight my own fights anymore. It's just... God, I, I feel like a burden. Just a, a problem for everybody. I can't handle anything anymore. I can't take care of myself. I can't handle other people's problems like I used to. I'm just a nuisance. Dad, don't, don't worry about that. I Just think about you always took care of us. You were there for us. Remember when you took the job in New York? We went up there, couldn't get an apartment for kids, but you kept trying. You left us all out in the car and uh, went in to check on one. While you were gone, had every derelict, every bum in the city surrounding us, wanting just a quarter piece, and uh, Mom was getting nervous, and then you came down the steps as soon as I saw you. Didn't worry. You told them to get away, and they did. Uh, I never have worried when you're with me. You always took care of us. When I was a kid, that bullying I had to deal with arms, uh, he took me up to the house, and he told his dad, said, hey, it's going to stop. His son was going to ease off, or you and him were going to have a problem. And his son eased off. <laughs> Getting that nurse transferred, no big deal. He's always been there for us. Well, thank you, son. I, I appreciate that. Um, I've been wondering, did, would you tell me some more about those fairy tales you believe in? Fairy tales, the Bible? Yeah, you know, like Moses part in the sea and, and people coming back from the dead and being healed and all that. I mean, if it happened back then, why isn't it happening now? Back then, things were new. We didn't have a Bible to look at. If someone came proclaiming they were teaching the Word of God and, and wanted to tell us what he wanted, how he wanted us to live, we didn't have any way to check it. And God used miracles and wonders so that we would know the people he sent were sent by him. He said those things would cease when we no longer needed them. If people just said God sent us and they didn't have any proof, wouldn't everybody think they were just liars, con artists, or, or maybe crazy? Well, without any proof, yeah, I, I suppose they would. Yeah, that's why when he gave, uh, gave us the age of miracles, they did great wonders. They, they knew things no one else could know. When God's Son, Jesus, came here, He healed the lame, he, he raised the dead, He did all kinds of things that people couldn't do if they weren't from God. And so, because they could do that, people listened. Yeah, but if it happened then, how come it's not still happening? You know, God says this is the way it's going to be for a little while. But later, these wonders and miracles will be done away with. So 
you know, we don't need them once we have the Bible. You know, now we can look. In those days, if somebody gets up and preaches, you can't just check, is this right, is this wrong? So he had to have those gifts, he had to have those miracles, so we'd know these were people from God. But now, we can look at the Bible. But all these facts, the earth being suspended, everybody thought it was flat, you know, scientific facts that weren't discovered for hundreds and thousands of years later. History claimed that uh, there were never any Hittites. The nation didn't exist. Well, God in his wisdom around the 50s decided when archaeologists dug up, they found this great nation, the Hittite nation, bigger than the Roman Empire. And so again, when the scoffers and the scholars were saying, the Bible's fake, it's not real, God smacked them right between the eyes and said, here, here's this nation I talked about. Here's these Dead Sea Scrolls, all kinds of stuff. They had writers. One of my favorites, Josephus from the first century. He wrote about what the Christians were going through. Uh, he was a, a Jew, but he wrote about the tortures. The, uh, just think about it now. You're wanting to get a following by teaching a false doctrine or a lie, and they're taking your children and throwing them to wild beasts. They've taken mom and nailed her to a cross and poured tar on her and used her to light the garden for Nero. Who would go through all that? Who would let their family be tortured and treated like that just to get a big following? Hell, I wouldn't, that's for sure. That's right. That's right. Other people, they wouldn't do all that for a lie. They're not going to go through this kind of stuff for a lie, so we have, have those things to prove that what these people say is true. You know, I hadn't really thought about it like that. Son, what, what do I have to do to see Barbara again? We'll get the Bible and start looking at it and see. You know, the, I love the book of Acts. He gives time and time, example, example. What do you have to do to be saved? You know, so we'll get it and start there. Okay. I got great news for you guys. What? Pop's going to lay the gospel. We've been studying. He's ready. Go see him. I love you forever. Oh, I'm going to love you guys forever now, too. <laughs> but belief was only the first step. Bill knew he still had to obey through confession, repentance, and putting on Christ through baptism. Now, I don't want you lifting me. You back, Paul. That's okay. I can get you. Just take your time. Well, I can. I can stand up, and turn around. All right. We just we're here. Okay. All right. Slow here. Got Michael there to help you on the other side. Okay, Dad. Here we go. Time. Uh, so I'm sorry. Just turned around here. All right. Just grab my neck, Pop. I don't want you to hurt your back. It's all right. Something can help. Yeah. It's okay. We got this bit. We got a sheet of foam cushion behind us, so we can ease in using it. Lower you down okay. easy by pulling on her, okay? Can I just sit down? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Elliot. Slow and steady now. You good? You okay? Yeah. Okay, here we go. It's okay. You got your belly? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Oxygen off. You good? All right, hold on. Are you, can you breathe? Bill can't go under while the oxygen is still attached, so we wanted to do this as quickly as possible for his sake. Floating. <laughs> Where's the preacher? He's back here. Bill. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do, sir. On the basis of that confession, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for the remission of your sins. 
Thank you, sir. Wait a minute now. Let me get my breath. It's okay. It's okay. Sit up a little bit. Just look at me. Blink real hard when you're ready to go. in Jesus caused him to obey the things that were left in Bible instruction that he received. He confessed Jesus as the Son of God. He repented and was baptized for the washing away of his sins, just as Acts 2.38 and so many other places talk about. And Bill was changed yet again. Gone were the days of threatening, brawling, scheming, and charming. Before, his life revolved around sports teams and games. Now, Bill proudly proclaimed to those he met how he had been baptized into Christ, how his sons and grandsons preached, how his family went on missionary trips. Bill's love for his family was one thing that never changed, but he was showing a softer and more spiritual side in those last few days. My grandfather made a difference to many people throughout his life. One was Lynn, his favorite CNA. She loved him and thought he was an amazing man. She wanted to understand why baptism was so important to him. So after studying the Bible with Paul and Kathy, she too made the decision to wash away her sins by being immersed into Christ. Lynn, I know you've studied the Bible and you believe it and that you've repented of your sins and I'd like to give you the chance to give your confession in front of witnesses and in front of all these people. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? I do, with all my heart. Based on this confession, I now immerse you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Ready? Right, yeah. Come in, man. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's not too bad, like is it? <laughs> My grandfather passed from this world three days after his own baptism. On April 1st of all days. I could practically see him making that face he'd make, sticking his tongue out jokingly at us all. Leading up to that day, family would assemble around Wild Bill's bedside, talking, praying, and even singing spiritual songs to him. He mostly stayed in a sleep-like state, but even toward the end, we could see his eyebrows or lips moving, showing that he was listening, getting bits and pieces, if not everything. When I told you at the start of this story that my grandfather is a very interesting man and that I love him very much, I very intentionally did not use the past tense to say that. My grandfather did not stop being interesting just because he died. I did not stop loving my grandfather just because he died. The cycle of family and our love for one another extends beyond this world and this life. And Papa, I love you forever.
Also, if you stuck around this long, you deserve some bloopers! Your chariot awaits. <laughs> you're just as bad as the rest of this inbred bunch. Bill, Bill, hey, Bill, Bill, no, Bill, Bill, you're gonna get us all fired, Bill. No, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> that moment the door will not open. <laughs> Come on, Bill. It was cute. <laughs> Are we on? <laughs> not now. No, no, keep going. Attempting something, no Too filming. Far, ruined. It's like keep all garden. Tell me one. Keep going. Tell yeah. me one. Keep going. Tell 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 me one. Spin the wheel, Vanna. That's it. That's the shot. That's the one. Hey, continuity's gone. <laughs> Hi, yes, this is Kathy. Hi, yes, can I speak to the manager? Thank you. Not her last name. <laughs> I lost my leg. I had a heart attack. I'm, I'm on. <laughs> well, I just picture the, 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 your family's faces with. You good? You bunch of stupid hicks. You gotta do what you're told and do it right the first time. Hey, these guys work hard. You guys should, you should show, show some respect. <laughs> I need to show them some respect. Was I talking to you? Well, I'm right here. Elliot! Yeah. Yeah. Talking to me? Yeah. You don't see me? Paul, your dad has had a heart attack. I, I'm sure. <laughs> Wrong number? No. Oh. Well, How you doing? <laughs> hey. You're trash, Bill Elliot. I can't believe you got my daughter to sneak off with you. My barber don't deserve you. Oh. Wow, that was like You're not a- Were there lines for this part? Yeah, I didn't ever have them. <laughs> Action. Thanks, Bill. Wait, I forgot what to say. Hmm? I can't believe we're doing this. <laughs> it's so much fun. Let's take a selfie. Yeah. Nineteen fifties. <laughs> yeah. Try to make that noise of the uh, ice machine. Put your hands on there, Paul. Hurry up. Wait a minute, Paul. Wait. I got the heavy end. Wait a minute. All right. Oh. Hey. Whoa. What's going on? Oh. They didn't fall down. You're leaving now. If it's true, though. <laughs> You bunch of stupid hicks! You need to do what you're told and do it right the first time. It's not for it. You bunch of stupid hicks! You bunch of stupid hicks! I'm sorry. It was much worse. Wait, how'd that go, Garrett? <laughs>